Hello everyone and welcome to this video series on building .NET applications on AWS with the SAM CLI. I'm James Eastham and I'll be your guide into the wonderful world of .NET, of serverless, of AWS and the SAM CLI. As a prerequisite to this series, you'll need to have .NET 6 installed and also the SAM CLI. Links for both you can find in the description below. Without further ado, let's dive straight into some code and get started building our first .NET serverless application. So here we are in a terminal window now, and as I said in the intro, what I wanted to quickly cover today is just how quickly you can get started using .NET on Lambda using the SAM CLI. So as I mentioned, I've already installed the SAM CLI and I've also got .NET 6 installed locally. So the first thing I'm gonna do is run the SAM init command. And what the SAM init command allows us to, to provision a SAM project from a set of templates. So I'm gonna use one of the AWS Quick Start templates. I'm gonna use the Hello World example. I don't want to use the most popular runtime, Python. Who, who knew Python was the most popular runtime? So I don't wanna do that. I wanna use .NET 6, of course. Package my code as a zip file. And then I can give my project a name. So .NET 6 SAM sample. And what it's gonna do now is it's gonna actually pull some, some files down from, from GitHub and it will give us a predefined project. So if I now navigate into my .NET 6 SAM sample folder and open up Visual Studio Code. So what, what SAM gives us from that template is it gives us a project for our Lambda function, it gives us a predefined test project, and it also gives us a pre-built template file. Now I'll go into some of the details about these different components in a later video. What I wanted to show you today is just how quickly you can get started developing with SAM. So the next step once you've, once you've got your SAM project ready is to run the SAM build command. And what SAM build is gonna do, that's actually gonna compile and zip up our .NET code. And, and how that works behind the scenes is that Sam actually looks for each resource in our template file that is of type AWS serverless function. And it runs a for each over each of these, these uh, functions and it actually runs a .NET publish. And it runs the .NET publish based on this code URI folder path. So Sam's gonna navigate into this source hello world folder and actually run a .NET publish. And we can actually see that happen if we look at the command line here. So you can see it's invoking .NET Publish and it's gonna output the, the files, um, the published files, and then it's going to zip them up into a zip file. And we can actually go and have a look at the zip file if we wanted to um, in the folder specified there. If we now actually want to deploy this code, we can just simply run SAM deploy. Now, if it's the first time you're deploying a project with SAM, it, it, you need to specify the guided flag and that just allows you to set some configuration that SAM will then use to deploy your application. So the first one is the name of our cloud formation stack, the region we want to deploy into. Um, do we want SAM to ask us to confirm the changes before actually deploying them? The default is no here, but I'm gonna say yes, just so you can see that happen. Is SAM okay to create an IAM role? We don't want to disable rollback. Um, if you've created any functions that use API Gateway as the event source um, and you don't have authorization defined, then Sam will warn you that you're gonna publish a, a public API that can be called by anybody. That's absolutely fine. We do want to save the configuration to a file and we're gonna save that just the defaults there. So that will save our configuration to a local file that we can then use to redeploy over and over again without needing to go through this workflow. And what, Sam's actually gonna do now on deploy is it's actually gonna upload that zip file created in the first step and it's gonna upload that to an S3 bucket and you can see that happen right just there. Um, and then it's gonna create a cloud formation change set. And where I specified that I want to confirm the changes before deploying, this is what's happening here. So Sam's now showing me exactly what it's going to do. So it's gonna create a Lambda function and the relevant roles and then it's gonna create a REST API and the relevant deployment and stages. I'm quite happy that that's okay. So I'm gonna now let that deploy. And now, now this isn't Sam anymore. This is now CloudFormation doing, doing its thing. So Sam CloudFormation is gonna take that template that we specified and it's gonna use that to create the resources that we need to actually um, run this function in the cloud. This can take a couple of seconds sometimes. So I'm just gonna stop the video here and come back when it's completed. 
So that's finished deploying now. Um, it took around 30 seconds all in. Um, and because we've specified some outputs in our template, we can see some defaults here. So I'm actually gonna go and hit that API endpoint now. And you can see that that API is working. We have a fully fledged API. Now, in terms of development lifecycle, um, we can just keep running SAM build, SAM deploy, SAM build, SAM deploy, and that can get a little bit tedious. So the other thing that SAM has built in is it's actually called SAM sync. And this allows us to, to run a command where SAM will watch our local files and it will automatically redeploy just the changes that are made. So if I run SAM sync, I need to specify the name of the stack that I want to sync with. So I'll do .NET 6 SAM sample. Um, and I missed the, and then I can add the watch flag at the end. And what this will now do is it'll, it'll first sync everything up with CloudFormation. Um, because this is a beta feature, Sam's just asking me to confirm that this might corrupt my CloudFormation stack. Um, because this is just a development stack and you'd be using this as your development stack cycle, you wouldn't be doing this for production deployments. So that's absolutely fine. Um, and now what Sam is going to do is just ensure that the version of the cloud formation stack I'm asking to sync with actually matches up with what I've got locally. So you can see it ran a really quick publish of all my code. It zipped the file up and it's just doing another redeployment now just to check that everything is in sync as, as a base before we actually start doing anything. So again, this just takes a couple of seconds to do this initial configuration. Um, that's completed now and you see now the CLI is waiting for me to change something um, so if I go back to my Visual Studio Code window now and I'm just going to go in and change the message that's been returned from Lambda so I'm going to save that file now and if I flip back to my terminal window you can see that straight away the SAM CLI started doing things and it's finished already that is just how quick it is to do that redeployment and you see I've got from Lambda if I drop the words from Lambda again and save that again, refresh this a few times, there we are. So it's a really quick development lifecycle that you can get into. And if you had more than just a single function in your project, Sam's smart enough to only redeploy the projects that need to be redeployed as and when you change the files. So that's what I've got for today. In the next video, I'll dive in a bit more detail into how these Lambda functions are actually structured and how you actually call a Lambda function and configure a Lambda function using the SAM CLI. Thanks a lot for listening.